Hey everybody, this is Kyle with Simaxium. Uh, in this two-part video series, we'll be covering scene setup and rendering of 3D floor plans um, like these um, using 3D Studio Max and F-Storm as our real-time rendering engine. Um, so if you're not familiar with F-Storm, uh, I'll take a look at the site real quick. Um, you can check it out here. It's at uh, fstormrender.ru. It's an excellent real-time rendering engine uh, we've been using for a bunch of projects and we'll continue to use it for a lot of these Patreon videos. Um, oops, sorry about that. Um, so uh, F-Storm is a GPU-based real-time renderer uh, developed by Andre Kozlov who worked on Oct the Octane rendering engine. Um, which Octane is really great, but this one's almost perfectly optimized for, um, for architectural visualization and has really good lens effects and things like that. Uh, it's our all built in, and I, I guess the most um, interesting part about uh, F-Storm is that it has a, uh, a built-in material converter uh, that's like perfectly optimized for um, for converting V-Ray materials. Because uh, I mean that that's basically our that was our old primary rendering engine was V-Ray, uh, which we'll we'll probably do some at least some V-Ray tutorials and, and things like that um, because it's still an excellent engine. V-Ray is still in my opinion, one of the best, of course, CPU-based rendering engines, but this um, this is definitely the future. Uh, so you, we've been using F-Storm constantly. Um, okay, so jump back, jumping back into the model, um, we'll take, so the, um, so in this first video, we'll briefly sort of dissect the previous scene, which is this one, um, that we did for the same project that we'll be covering in the next video. Uh, so in the next video, we'll start from scratch and build the entire floor plan um, and do all the modeling, texturing, and lighting uh, for, for rendering with F-Storm. So we'll get into the, the more detailed aspects of, of, uh, of, this, of that sort of process. But, but in this video, we'll um, kind of jump in the model now and, uh, and I'll kind of take you through uh, the process of, of, of scene setup and things like that for, uh, for this scene. So in the next video, we'll be covering the floor just below this floor. Um, so it's it's going to look very similar to this, but uh, just a little different. So it gives us uh, the opportunity to, to walk you through step by step. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hide everything, and I'll walk you through it. So this is what we received from the client. Uh, so a little bit of a background on this project. We, um, uh, we were contracted uh, by an interior design company based out of LA. Um, to uh, to basically become ingrained in and in into the um, into the interior designers process of um, specking materials and um, uh, and, and uh, picking furniture and art and things like that um, for this so this is very very early on in the process this is just the first draft uh, that we've been working on uh, for this client um, so um, we're we're hoping this becomes more than just a two-part series and it will kind of continue on as we add more and more sort of photorealism uh, into these uh, 3D plans. Alright, so um, we received the, th the the 2D plan from the client. We basically just, um, this is all we really had to go on. Uh, we did get a bit more information. We got some elevations. Um, so we had um, wall height and window height and door height um, information um, that we were able to, to interpolate and put into the model. Um, so Basically, the way we started would, was just basically by tracing floors. And again, in the next video, we'll be doing um, each each and every step that I'll I'll be covering today, um, starting from scratch. But uh, just for now, if we look back in the history in the uh, modifier stack, basically we just started by tracing the lines. Now, why did we trace the lines? Well, the CAD file that we were given. Um, was basically just like a flattened to uh, flattened PDF. Um, I, I'm assuming it was made, um, yeah, I don't know, either either in Revit or I think in this case it was made in Form Z, which is a bit of an older software. Um, so we didn't have any layer states, um, unfortunately. So we had to trace all the all the lines, um, and then we tossed on a UV map modifier to, to make this a uh, really nice sort of um, veneer wood. That's the uh, the sort of goal for the client. Um, it's just get this sort of seamless wood kind of going on, um, at least for the first draft, uh, to show the client. Uh, and then we, the next uh, step is we started adding in just the, the basic walls. Um, so the way we did these, uh, turn on my uh, edge faces, you can see these. 
Um, we started the same way we did the fours. We kind of traced out the lines, which is rather quick. Um, we turn on the we turn on the snapping uh, endpoint snap, and we, we, we were able to trace directly over the top of the floor plan really easily. Extruded the lines up, um, to created these solids, and then we tossed in an edge loop, um, which if you're not familiar with the edge loop tool is excellent. Um, if you go to customize, customize your inter interface, you can add it as a hotkey, uh, which is what we like to do. So swift loop, this guy right here, you can add it as, uh, I think it was control shift D is what we like to, oops. <laughs> Apparently in my screen sharing, <laughs> my screen sharing tool, it, uh, that's a hotkey as well. So um, I'll add that before the video starts so I can show you. Uh, anyway, um, we tossed in an edge loop and then we closed up um, the uh, tops of the doors, uh, I guess that would be the, 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 the lid holes or the, uh, uh, you know, I guess it's the soffit walls ab above the doorways um, with, uh, with a bridge and an edit poly modifier. So you can see that happening there. Um, okay, and after that we uh, tossed on the UVW map modifier. Really just simple, quick and dirty. Um, the material that we chose um, to do is just basically like a white drywall and we kind of have this dirty texture um, applied to it, um, which this is this is something we'll get into later. Um, so you can kind of tell it has like a bit of a dirt to it. Kind of, we you can use a V-ray dirt, but in terms of um, using F-Storm, it's just a bit easier to use a, a bitmap, an F-Storm bitmap. So definitely something we'll get into later in the next video. Um, so after the walls went up. Um, we started getting in more in detail. Um, we started with the windows, which um, are really basic. I mean, they're just made of uh, basically just two different parts to give a... Uh, this is like, again, just very quick and dirty. Um, two different parts. Basically, we just created the, the inner mullion and the outer mullion to give a gap in between. Uh, and then the seam was covered by um, these guys, the metal archways. So the metal archways come over the, the top of these. Um, those are all grouped. As you can see there. So the, the, uh, the idea was that uh, for, you know, the client wanted these, uh, the windows to be almost like these big, really heavy looking portals. Um, so these are all um, sort of like a, a raw steel, like a black steel almost, which is kind of cool. Um, to, to give like a really really pronounced uh, aesthetic um, to the uh, to the to the large windows, make, make those really heavy. Um, so uh, those are that was a sort of next step was the uh, the windows and these metal archways, and then we had to put in these metal archways as part of the uh, the design um, in all of the doorways. So all of the doorways, all the uh, passageways, had these half inch thick steel plated. Um, uh, archway wraps um, that are a quarter of an inch inset uh, away from the wall to give a bit of a reveal, um, which is kind of cool. That shows up in the renderings pretty nicely. Um, so that was the ne the next step, and then from there on, we you know we of course did the uh, the ceilings, which is definitely something we'll cover in the next video. There's two different types of ceilings. There's one for the perspectives and one for the 3D plans. Actually, what we did in this case for the 3D plans is we um, made the ceilings invisible to the camera um, but they were visible to the to the light from the sun um, which is uh, which is a bit of a camera trick it allows um, us to light the interior from with using the interior lights and not just from the sun so it gives a bit of a, a photorealism to the to the look of the plan as opposed if it was light so you wouldn't you wouldn't see these these really nice um, shadowing and, and things like that happening so it's just kind of like more ambient occluded um, than if it was just lit directly from the sun. Um, so that's kind of our, that was sort of our approach to lighting, uh, which is definitely something we'll get into later, the next scene. Um, but uh, so the next, uh, the next part we did, so we did the metal doors, we started adding in smaller details, of course, the doors, and then we um, uh, set up a couple different wall uh, veneer types. So in this case, the option one was a metal uh, and the option two is metal and wood, um, so the wood kind of matches the flooring. Um, 
uh, just just for like a, a design aesthetic that the client was going for. Um, and of course, we tossed in the, the stairs and, and uh, the elevators and things like that. So these are the, actually the, the elevator cores, which gives a bit of depth to the to the images, um, as you can see there. Um, and then we added some smaller details, of course, like the furniture. Um, in this case, there was a gym in this corner here, so we had a bunch of gym equipment that we modeled in there. Um, and kitchens, and then we did all the lighting, the interior lighting. Uh, this is kind of how we did that. Um, of course, the casework and just everything else. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's uh, that's basically just an, an overview of of the, the structure of this model. Um, and kind of how we started and that this is really going to be the approach that we go into for the next video um, but in the next video I'll show you a bunch of sort of tips and tricks for quickly modeling over the top of a 2d plan um, and then we'll uh, we'll talk more about uh, custom configuration of uh, the materials and, and how to how to set up these these scene lights um, as effectively as possible using instancing and things like that um, so yeah thank you so much for watching this video and uh, and we'll um, We'll hopefully see you uh, in the next video. Um, if you uh, if you subscribe to our Patreon page, you'll be able to to watch all of the uh, part two uh, and beyond uh, videos that we start posting. Um, we'll be sure to post all of the part one videos as as sort of like free for everybody uh, to just to to, to get you um, interested in the content. Um, I think that's really important. Um, so hopefully uh, from these videos, you'll be able to learn something. Um, and uh, we can pass on some knowledge that we've gained from, from some real-world projects. Um, all right, thank you so much for watching.